to the second part. We are told to calculate the upper quartile. The upper quartile. That is part B. Upper quartile is Q3. And we said Q3 used three quarters times the total number of terms was 315. Right? And 315. Let's get this one. So it's 3. This is number in the 2. That is 6.25 uh, position. The number in that position or two that that term. Right? Let's see where it lies. Can it lie here? No, 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 no. 272. All right. This is uh, way below. 228 is less than that. Right? So it should be lying in the next class. So it lies in this class of 61 to 70. So you can say it lies in 61 to 70 class. It lies in 61 to 70 class. All right, let's see. 61 to 70 class. So that means what? That means the Q3 shall be equal to lower class limit of this class where it lies plus 236.25 minus previous cumulative frequency of that class over time the class frequency of that class times the class size familiar usually just the same so the class uh, lower class limit is 60.5 plus 236.25 minus previous cumulative frequency for that class is uh, 228 228 over the class size of that class is Class frequency, not size. Class frequency is 44 times the class size is constant 10. So this becomes 60.5 plus, <coughs> so this one minus 228, 8.25, 8.25 over 44, or this one by 10. And this one simply gives us. This one is times 10 divided by 44. Then we are adding to 60.5. And this gives us 62.375. 62 62.375. That's how you get your uh your 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 upper quartile. Get three quarters of the total number of times, get the position, determine from the cumulative frequency where that position is, where the class in which that term lies. Then using that, that class, get the previous cumulative frequency of that class, class frequency of that class, class size, lower class limit. Just follow this step. And right way, it will bring you to the right answer. So now we move on part C, which is now the fourth decide.